Welcome, First Presbyterian Church here in Taylorville. Any announcements from the congregation? I've got a few. Uh, please, uh, let's please welcome Jackie Dooley this morning. She's a commissioned ruling elder from Assumption, and she's thinking about joining us to preach on a regular basis and provide some pastoral care. Uh, She's here to kind of check us out a little bit, so please impress her so she will come back. <laughs> yes. Also, Harmony is here this morning uh, to bring their... And I already heard them sing this morning at the Methodist Church, and they are great. So, anything else? Uh, probably. <laughs> okay. Thank you. 
Um, I don't take this lightly, being here. It is a privilege for me to be here. And in maybe in our future time or discussions that we can have together, I can, I can tell you just, just how funny this is <laughs> that I'm here. But thank you for having me. Um, I come to you from the long trek of, from Assumption. So just a hop, skip, and a jump away. Um, my name's Jackie Dooley, and I've spent a, a great deal of my life teaching. I'll let you guess what level. Some of you are familiar faces and probably already know. Um, but uh, I just retired from teaching in May. And from I spent 34 and a half years teaching in Assumption. And the day that I retired, took on the job of babysitting my grandson, who is one. So I have two grown children, um, my husband, Tom, and, um, and here I am. So uh, before I begin with the scripture reading, would you join me in prayer, please? God, today we come to you thankful for your word. And as you open up these scriptures to us, help us to keep away the distractions so that you can fill our hearts. May we hear what you have to say to us today. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our first reading comes from John chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. It is page 891 and 892 in your pew Bible. So when the crowd saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum seeking Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me not because... You saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. And whoever believes in me shall not thirst. Our second reading comes from Psalm chapter 78, verses 23 through 39, page 849 in your pew Bible. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven, and he rained down on them manna to eat and gave them the grain of heaven. Man ate of the bread of the angels. He sent them food in abundance. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he led out the south wind. He rained meat on them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. He let them fall in the midst of their camp, all around their dwellings. And they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. 
But before they had satisfied their craving, while the food was still in their mouths, the anger of God rose against them, and he killed the strongest of them and laid low the young men of Israel. In spite of all this, they still sinned. Despite his wonders, they did not believe. So he made their days vanish like a breath, and their years in terror. When he killed them, they sought him. They repented and sought God earnestly. They remembered that God was their rock, the most high God, their redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths. They lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward him. They were not faithful to his covenant. Yet he, being compassionate, atoned for their iniquity and did not destroy them. He restrained his anger often and did not stir up all his wrath. He remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passes and comes not again. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In following the lectionary in its three-year cycle, today is the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, which puts us into this long season of green pyramids, which happens to coincide for us with our long green season in agriculture, growing season. We can see the crops are growing. We can accurately measure that. We can see that. How do we measure our faith life, our spiritual growth? Our scripture reading for today is the second Sunday of the Bread of Life Discourse where we pick up with Jesus after the feeding of the 5,000 and walking on the water. John writes his gospel as a beloved disciple of Jesus, one who was close to Jesus, close in proximity of him and all the activity, but more importantly, one who was close as one who has a relationship who knows and loves Jesus. And John writes so that the others will have the opportunity, others, meaning us, so we may have this opportunity to love and enjoy a real relationship with Jesus. So I know you're, you're in this cycle of people filling the pulpit. So if, if next week someone is coming and they're talking about the bread of life, it is, we have a few weeks of that. But today, the focus is on Jesus addressing the crowd on this bread of life discourse. To seek a real relationship with, with Jesus That's a pretty important reason for coming to church. We come to worship God. We come to give him praise for his faithfulness, for his fulfilling promises, praise for his blessings, and we come to hear his word and learn more about his love through his son, Jesus. To be honest, As a kid, I wasn't always, that wasn't always my intention or my thought on going to church. Oh, I would get excited about going to church at times, especially when I would get to spend the night at Grandma and Grandpa's house the night before, get to go to their church. Grandma had candy in her purse. Grandpa had candy in his pockets. And as we sat in attendance at the Rock Springs Church of God. Grandma sang alto from the pew. And then, when church was over, 
Grandpa dropped us off downtown or at the shopping center where Woolworths was. And Woolworths had those little plastic farm animals that I liked. And, and the candy, the penny candy there. And they had a diner counter. And if the whole family went to Grandma and Grandpa's church, well, then we were going to the Redwood all-you-could-eat buffet afterward. For me, it was an all-you-can-eat rolls and mashed potatoes. So in verse 24 and 25, when the crowd followed Jesus, lacking understanding and maybe even a little bit frustrated that he just left them, and they asked him, when did you come here? And Jesus tells them, verse 26 through 27, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. They were seeking Jesus. Isn't that what we are supposed to do? But like me, as that young child, I could easily fit in with this crowd here seeking Jesus to get to the buffet. We can do the right thing, but for the wrong reason. Seeking Jesus is the right thing, but he tells them, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Verse 26. I can relate to this crowd. They wanted blessing. They wanted what would sustain them in their day-to-day -day life. They wanted the stuff that he could provide. And Jesus wants those who don't want the blessings without him. In Exodus 33, when the Israelites sinned against the Lord by making and worshiping a golden calf, God told Moses that he would give them the land of Canaan. He himself would not go or be with them. But Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? The crowd, rather than wanting more of Jesus, were wanting more from Jesus. We must want the gift giver more than we want the gift. God loves to pour out blessings. He is gracious. But Jesus points out that what they need is not an endless supply of bread, an endless buffet, but the bread of life. He's talking about spiritual food, eternal life. In the Greek language, the word life is either bios or zoe. Bios means life, but it means life in existence. Exist. Life. Zoe means living, being, spirit. The crowd was looking for that which would help them exist. Jesus wanted to give them that which would help them live. Yes, live for eternity. 
but not just for eternity, but when you have that intimate relationship with Christ, the joy of an eternal life becomes part of your earthly life. Our kingdom life is connected with our life as we live out God's will with a thankful heart for what Jesus has done. I've seen an advertisement, some sort of a health product, I can't remember exactly what it was, but where the developer of this health product said his goal was to live to be 180 years old. <laughs> Why? <laughs> and did he mean Zoe? Live or Bios? Live. Wanting more time does not add value. Using the time we have adds value. Three time heavyweight boxing champion Muhammad Ali says it this way don't count the days. Make the days count. <clears throat> we all have the bios things in our lives. What kinds of things help us to just exist? The bios things. <clears throat> what is our bios? I think that sometimes the things that get us through day to day can sometimes be the dates on a calendar, the special events we write down, going from one event to another event, living for that next moment, and then when that's over, we wait for the next one, and soon our lives revolve around that. Maybe our bios is that graduation, that next job, promotion, our kids, our spouse. We can live for food. We can live for gossip. And so many things can grab our attention. It is the lie that Satan whispers in our ears, as we find in C.S. Lewis's The Screwtape Letters, where the demon's plan is to keep his person that he was assigned to focused on these things. The bios things to keep them from seeking a real relationship with God. They are sometimes little things that we use to just cope or get through, but we can become so easily dependent on those things as ways to make our lives worth living, and we can miss it. Loving the gifts more than the gift giver will not give us lasting fulfillment. But when our attention is on the one, the giver, who makes it all possible, we can be filled with this bread or the water. The spirit that never runs dry. Remember the woman at the well. Jesus tells her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. In John 4, verse 10. I remember my grandma once telling me that she loved me so but that she loved Jesus more. As a kid, that was hurtful. I thought I was the most important thing to Grandma. But then she said this, that loving Jesus was how she could be filled with love so she could love me and all her grandchildren. That's what Jesus is trying to get the crowd to understand. 
Jesus tells the crowd, when they want to know what works they must do, that all they need to do is believe in the one he has sent. Verse 29. But they're a difficult crowd. And they even use scripture to try to get what they want as they demand more signs from Jesus. And we can get pretty good at picking out scripture to prove our own points when we want to win an argument or just get our way. You see, they point out that Moses supplied Israel with the manna, bread from heaven, in the wilderness, stated in verse 31. But Jesus corrects them. It was God who was the source of the bread, not Moses. We are so easily drawn to things that are not lasting. God was offering them something greater than bread. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Verse 34. And today, when we pray together, give us this day our daily bread. It is not just Give us those things that get us through each day. It is give us this bread that fills us with life, with zoe. Jesus describes the gift of eternal life to them in this way. I am of life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry, and no one who believes in me will ever be thirsty. To feed, to devour, to consume, means you take it all in. So when Jesus says, I am the bread of life, he is saying, put your focus on him. The people ask what works they must do. He has taken it upon himself to do what needs to be done. So that all we have to do is to believe on him. Feast on his words. Take in his love. To never go hungry again means to live an eternal life. And to know that Jesus made that possible. Jesus made it possible, made it permanent, made it secure and irrevocable. It can't be undone. He has come from heaven as the bread of life Thank you, God, and amen.